It's Friday, 22 November. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to talk about the Philippines 777 flight that had the engine surge on departure from Los Angeles Airport en route to Manila yesterday, 21 November. I've been flying for over 40 years, and I'm currently a 777 first officer for a major U.S. carrier based out of Los Angeles. So about 11.30 yesterday morning, Philippines flight 113, a 777-300ER, departed 25 right out of Los Angeles with 342 passengers on board and 18 crew members. And shortly after rotating and beginning their departure, it appears that the right engine began surging quite a bit. So today I want to give you some Blanco Lirio approved links for some further understanding of some of the issues that we're talking about today and give you some of the basic perspective from a pilot's perspective of what this crew was dealing with. The crew, by the way, of course, made a left-hand turn back downwind and landed fairly uneventfully except for the uh, deflating of nearly all the tires on board the aircraft as a result of the heavyweight landing. More on that in a minute. The maximum takeoff weight on the Boeing 777-300 is 775,000 pounds. The maximum landing weight is 554,000 pounds. However, once you are in an emergency, have declared an emergency, those limits are out the window and you can land a Boeing 777 at or near its max landing weight. It just has to be done very carefully. So the first Blanco Lirio recommended link I want to recommend is the Aviation Herald. There they've got the basic facts that they know so far about this incident. And he's also got links to the raw video footage that's available at this time for this incident. He also has a picture that just showed up from uh, somebody on the ground showing the engine surge happening right as they broke ground. This is a classic emergency situation that all pilots are trained for that this is the classic situation that we train for in the simulator every time we go back to recurrent training is it's considered one of the most critical phases of flight an engine failure on takeoff so looking at the video evidence that's available on aviation herald it looks like this um surging went on for quite a while after takeoff and it looks like the surging began just about as soon as they broke ground as a crew, you want to get safely away from the ground before you begin securing an engine that's having a problem on your aircraft. The fireballs of chuff, 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 chuff you see coming out of the aircraft are the engine surges. They're basically a form of compressor stall. That's the second Blanco Lirio approved link I want to send you over to in the description below. Agent Jay-Z, the jet mechanic up in Ontario, or up in Canada, British Columbia, Canada, has a whole channel dedicated to jet engine mechanics and he's got a wonderful 30 minute video presentation going into in depth all about compressor stalls and surges in turbine engines. The causes of these engine surges can be any number of things from a bird strike to some kind of internal failure, something that's disrupting the airflow generally over the compressor section or the compressor blades of the engine. Remember the compressor blades are basically tiny little airfoils spinning around at a high rate of speed developing lift. If that lift is disrupted, you get an engine stall or correction compressor stall or surge. Regardless of what the cause of the engine so surge or stall is, the pilot procedure for the Boeing 777 in this case is to simply retard the throttle of the affected engine. So turn off the auto throttle to the affected engine, working together as a team, working very closely together, and then one of the pilots slowly retards, generally the pilot flying, brings the affected engine throttle back until the surging stops. In the case of the Boeing 777, if the surging stops at some point as you're retarding the throttle, you do not need to shut the engine all the way down. However, if you go come all the way back to idle and the surging continues, then you need to shut the engine down, secure the engine. For a complete audio description of what happened on the ATC tapes, I recommend you go over to the Voss Aviation site in the links below, and you'll get the entire radar picture of the uh, return flight of the box pattern as they call it and return back to Los Angeles complete with most of the ATC communications of the actual flight. The 
Though this event is very rare, pilots can go through an entire 20, 30 year career and never experience a single engine failure, let alone an engine failure on takeoff. This is practiced regularly in the simulator because it is such a critical phase of flight. And as such, this very exact procedure is briefed before every departure from every airport amongst the entire crew before you leave. Because remember, with the crew uh, at a major airline, you may be flying with different people, folks you've never flown with before in your life, and though we're all trained to the exact same standards, we all need to brief together to get everybody on board to know what the plan is. And typically in the briefing before a departure, we brief exactly this scenario. What are we going to do for an engine failure on takeoff? And typically the plan out of LA is, well, if we're on the south complex, we'll do a left hand box pattern back around, uh, uh, come back and land. What are you going to do about fuel dumping? How come this crew didn't fuel dump? On the Boeing 777 nowadays, since you can land at such a high gross weight near your max landing weight, you do not necessarily need to take the time to dump your fuel. Besides, fuel dumping is typically done up at a higher altitude, around 10,000 feet, if you needed to do it. How come you know already that you don't need to dump fuel? Because in that briefing, before you depart, one of the pilot, one of the third, well, let me back up a little bit. On each of these long uh, international hall flights, you have more than two pilots on board. You typically have a third or a, and even a fourth relief pilot. All four of you are on board for every takeoff and every landing. So one of those extra pilots, one of their additional duties before takeoff as part of this brief is to determine the landing distance at their departure airport with the given temperature and weight of their aircraft at that time. So before you even take off, you have already been briefed on how much runway will you use if you need to come back around and land right now with the present fuel load and passenger count. And in the case of the 777 and the runways at LA, even at max gross weight, you still have plenty of runway at Los Angeles, if you've got the right weather conditions, to land heavy weight. So you do not need to dump fuel or divert to a longer runway. Now. So even though the max landing weight is about 554,000 pounds, because you're in emergency, you can violate, if you will, that limitation and go on ahead and land overweight. However, it will require a overweight landing inspection of the aircraft. Once again, some of the passengers were wondering about uh, how come we didn't hear anything from the captain. Well, remember, aviate, navigate, communicate. Communicate's the last thing to do. And the, these crews are very busy in a time-compressed environment after being initially startled by this compressor stall event. Not only have they got to secure the engine or and run through the engine surge compressor stall checklist, they've got a number of other checklists they got to consider on their way back to the airport. Whether they do them or not is up to the captain's discretion, but you've got the uh, landing on one engine checklist or engine failure landing checklist, uh, the overweight landing checklist to consider. What are you going to do uh, once you land? Are you going to stop straight ahead on the runway? Are you going to clear the runway? Do we need to consider an emergency evacuation? What are some of the emergency evacuation considerations? By the way, the emergency evacuation is also always pre-briefed in that huddle before every takeoff as to what every individual crew member's position is or job is in the event of an emergency evacuation. Now let's talk about flying the 777 after or during such an emergency. As we discussed a, a moment ago, when we take off, the throttles are in auto throttle position. Once you've pulled the offending engine back to idle, the, the auto throttle is off on that one particular engine. However, the auto throttle should remain on for the good engine. And it's easiest to handle these emergencies. It's very easy to handle these emergencies, especially on the 777, with the autopilot on once you're up safely away from the ground and you've got everything safely under control. The autopilot does a wonderful job on the tr Boeing 777 of flying the aircraft on one engine. In fact, the Boeing 777 is one of the few aircraft I've ever got type rated in that is certified to do a single engine auto land. However, typically most landings, including especially single engine landings, the actual landing is hand flown once the aircraft is gotten into a position on final. 
When you're landing very heavyweight in the Boeing 777, your speed control becomes critical. Why? Because as you begin to configure your aircraft for landing, you bring, you set your first notch of flaps, your stall speed versus your flap limit speed is a very narrow window of perhaps maybe as little as 20 or 30 knots depending upon your weight. So your speed control is very critical on a heavyweight landing situation. Especially since you're so heavy, your stall speeds are higher, you're going to be flying at higher speeds. So as you're making your pattern, flying your pattern at higher than normal speeds, by the way you're going to land with less flaps than you normally do, so that's going to require a higher landing speed. Your turns are going to be generally a wider radius of turns, so you need to take that into consideration when you're making your turns. If you look at the ADS-B return data on the VAS aviation uh, profile there, it looks like the Philippine crew overshot final quite a bit and got a, a little bit encroached on the north side of the runway final. However, Philippine air was at a much lower altitude and so there was plenty of vertical separation from the other aircraft. Now what about the tires deflating? Well, the crew landed uneventfully on 25 left. You know, the runways at um, Los Angeles, there's a north complex and a south complex. They're parallel runways. Typically, you take off on the inboard runways and you land on the outboard runways. The, this Philippines flight uh, landed on 25 left, as we typically do, rolled out to the end, and then decided instead of stopping at the end and having crews inspect the aircraft, they were, uh, there's a lot of pressure to continue the flow with ATC. Aircraft are still coming in all the time, so they cleared, went ahead and cleared the runway and got across the uh, inside runway and headed out towards the gate. And then all, nearly all the tires appeared to deflate. What caused that? Well, on a heavyweight landing, the temperatures of your tires are going to get very hot. Airplane tires are designed to deflate when the temperatures exceed certain limits so that the tires do not explode. Airplane tires use a thing called a fusible plug. It's a, it's a metal plug filled with a, with a low temperature, a, a, a type of alloy that'll uh, melt at a very low temperature like solder. So once the tire temperature gets up to about 400 degrees or so, that metal uh, melts and the air can escape in a controlled fashion and deflate the tire in a controlled fashion. Why is that important? If in the event of a emergency evacuation or if you have emergency crews responding to your aircraft, the last thing you need is tires exploding around the aircraft. So with the help of fuse plugs that allows a controlled deflation of the tires as they have overheated from the cumulative results of a heavyweight landing plus a long taxi. And taxiing on one engine as well requires some additional braking. So that's some of the issues that was faced in this crew. This is a very good straightforward emergency unlike some of the more convoluted uh, uh, emergencies we've been discussing lately on this channel. Uh, good job to the crew for getting it down on the ground. Uh, one thing I gotta say is on one of the videos in the second segment climb, and we've all made this mistake before, I'm not sure if, that, if this happened in this case, but it looks like the landing gear was still down in the second segment climb. Typically when you, as soon as you rotate, V1, rotate, positive rate, gear up. Well, if, it, if your takeoff goes something more like V1, rotate, positive rate, what the heck is that? Look at that engine, what's going on there? You may very well forget to raise the gear on takeoff and leave that gear hanging for a while. The problem with that is the landing gear adds additional drag to your second segment or the second part of your climb. You need to get that gear up just like you always do even if you have an engine failure. So I hope this gives you a little better understanding of what went on with the Philippines Flight 113 at Los Angeles yesterday. Kudos to the crew for getting them back on the ground. If we get more information we'll let you know. By the way, I don't think this has anything to do with the recent Emergency Airworthiness Directive on Boeing 777-GE90-115B series engines regarding interstage seals. That's a completely different type of engine failure. This does not to be associated with that sort of failure, this particular um, engine surge situation today. As we get more information, we'll see you here. Thanks for watching. Now, where was I after the dog interrupted me? Chewy, you're no good.
telling you. 